Hi everyone, this is Abhay Talreja and today I'm just going to talk to you about security and achieving that is so easy these days. It's actually cost free getting these certificates as well as, you know, making your site secure. And especially when you're hosting your website on uh, third party applications like DigitalOcean. I haven't played with other providers, but at least for DigitalOcean, I can say that it was, say that it was very easy. So let me just quickly walk you through and as you can see, this is the HTTPS that you see on my server where I've hosted my application and I'm sure that uh, after this tutorial even you would be able to do that. So firstly, I'll just go and create a droplet on DigitalOcean and uh, just to just for the benefit of everyone, what I have done is I have created a series of blog posts where you can, uh, you know, go through step by step on whatever I do on this course. In fact, I'll be following the blog, blog post so that it's easier to copy and paste, especially the commands and uh, we don't miss on anything. Okay, so let me just quickly go and create a droplet and I can just go with the usual one, the $10 that I usually take. Again, I, I will delete this droplet after I'm done with this tutorial so I don't have to worry about it. And here I go, I create my droplet, call it movie byte prod, you can call it anything you want. And uh, as you can see, uh, it'll, it'll take some time to uh, get the droplet up and running. And soon you should be getting an email in your inbox about the details of login. The user would pretty much be the root, the password and the IP address. And then you can follow along on the blog post. As you can see, the IP is 162, 243, 187, 179. Okay, so I got my email uh, from DigitalOcean. It's fair and simple. Let me quickly follow my blog post. So first you need to access the server that you created using the root credentials. It's very simple. So what you do is go to a terminal window irrespective of what you're doing. Copy and paste this term and just replace the access with your IP address that you got in the email. Okay, once you do that, you should be asked for a password. You'll be asked for a question about connecting. You say yes. And then you'll be asked for a password, which again, they have mailed it to you. I will paste it to and now they'll ask you to change the password. So first just paste the same password you copied for the current password and for the new password, I'm just gonna put demo underscore one, two, three, four. Demo underscore one, two, three, four. So I'm connected as a root uh, onto the server. So that, that was very easy to log in. Now as a, a precautionary measure, right? So what uh, at least I have re researched is, it's better that we use another user to perform any operations that we have versus the root user. So we'll just create another user. In my case, I'm creating using my name. It's uh, Abhay. So I'll just create a user called Abhay. You can skim through the details as you want, but it'll ask you for the password. Again, I'll give the same password, demo underscore one, two, three, four, demo underscore one, two, three, four. It'll ask me for my name. I'll give it Abhay Talreja. It'll ask me for room number, work phone number. If I don't have any of these details, I can just click enter and everything should be fine. I just say a yes at the end and the user would be created. Now it's time to give uh, Abhay the mod access. So we'll just copy this command. This will give it the mod access. And now Abhay is a moderator or probably a admin user. Now, uh, usually uh, I recommend doing this step is uh, of adding the public authentication. How does it work is uh, you have a key that is generated on your system and that key is shared with the DigitalOcean servers. So what happens is when your system talks to that server, they, uh, the, uh, the server reads the key that you have already set and based off it, it can authenticate you without the password. So what we can do is we can just run SSH keygen Again, it'll, uh, it'll enter the file. You say, yes, it is the right file that you need to enter. Just click enter. If you have any passphrase for security, enter that. I don't. So I'll just enter empty and this is how it looks. Okay, so now we have the SSH key that was generated for us uh, into one of our systems for this server. Now, what we need to do is we need to have a tool called copy ID. So the next step will, uh, if you don't have it on your machine already, it's a very simple command that you can run. And all thanks to this beautiful uh, code or awesome GitHub project SSH copy ID for OSX. 
well i use a mac so it's uh, this is what i use but if not you can easily google and find out how you can do it on other uh, systems so uh, it is very easy to launch this and have it installed if you do not have already installed it you can just call this and your copy id would be installed on your server on your system again make sure that you're doing it from the local machine and not the signed in machine so i'll recommend opening a new terminal and then pasting this uh, command that i have and boom your uh, ssh uh, copy id would be installed on your system okay so that's something that you need to do from the local and now once you have your key and the ssh copy id what you need to do is put that key onto the newly created droplet from DigitalOcean. So what you need to do is from again from your local system, not the logged in root, uh, you know, the new root uh, login from the server, but on your local copy the SSH copy ID and replace this with the server that you have. So server IP was this one. And I'll just paste this here. So what this will do is this will copy it and it'll ask me for the password for one time. I'll just put in demo one, two, three, four, and boom, I'm done. So what this will do is this will authenticate my system to the uh, servers. Again, this is an optional step, but I recommend it. If you don't do this, you probably have to enter password every time you connect to the system. Now we can test our login very easily. So let me just quickly log out from the root out here. Okay. Now I'll try and connect to this system via SSH. And if you remember for root, I had to put in the password as well as uh, after setting SSH copy, I had to do that. But now I should be straight away connected because my system is authenticated to log into this box. Abhay at moviebyteprod.com or whatever that uh, root name you have given. So that was as easy as uh, you know it can get. Now the next is adding user preferences. So uh, you need to change few uh, pseudo files. Again, I messed up a couple of times on these, but uh, be careful when you do that. So first thing you need to do is you need to again log back as a root user. Let me exit this. Let me do the same command. Root. Okay, I'm in as a root user. So what I do is sudo uh, v sudo what it does is it gives you a preference file for editing again be careful be very very careful on what you do on this one uh, but uh, let me just quickly show you what you need to replace so if you see percentage sudo all equals all which is out here you see this you need to just replace the all with no password all which means it will not allow any other system you don't need to add a password to the sudoers So let me come down and let me save. For saving, all you do is control X. It will ask you for a confirmation, say yes, and then press enter. Now again, what you need to do is log in, change your user from root to the user that you just created. In my case, it was Abhay. So I'll just do su hyphen Abhay. Okay, so I'm logged in as Abhay. You can see it out here. Sorry, I was reading this part and I thought it did not allow me to log in. Again, now you restrict the permissions on the SSH file itself so that not everyone can access it. Just copy paste this command and this should be good. Now restrict the permissions on the authorized keys. Again, you transferred a key from here to there. So you need to make sure nobody else has access to it. And now you can ex exit Abhay as a user or in your case, whatever user you created and you will be logged back into root user.